He's a tired old man, squinting his watery eyes as he bends over needle and thread in a corner tailor shop in an American city. A tall, sun-bronzed young zealot working in a kibbutz in Israel. A gifted musician performing in a European symphony orchestra. An ordinary family man with no medals or high water marks in his life. But yet each is different from his fellow man. And for thousands of years, that difference was turned against him. Today, that difference has meant the difference between survival and death. To me, a Jew is neither a specific ethnic or religious or cultural designation. To me, a Jew is a special kind of man, whatever his race or color or religion. A man who has learned the bitter art of survival and the ability to endure adversity with dignity. A man who has dared to be different when the costs of differences sometimes were life itself. But he is no member of a super race. And for dark periods in history, men who thought they were members of a super race believed he could be exterminated. I sat in rooms as a foreign correspondent in the blackout hole of Berlin during World War II and talked with members of one supposed super race who thought to practice genocide against a people much older and wiser than themselves. And as they mechanically mouthed the philosophical insanities that had been programmed into them by a madman, this reporter, a Hawaiian-born Roman Catholic of German-American parentage, mentally and morally became a Jew. Mm, yes. That's very powerful. Beautiful voice. Yeah. Yes, well, commentator, radio. Wow, that's really fabulous. Now, uh, you have another uh, piece uh, about a Jewish cowboy. Yes, this is uh, something I found at a uh, flea market up in New Milford, actually. Uh, it's it's uh, Manischewitz's uh, promotion. Oh. Uh, Harold Stern. That's very interesting. The Jewish cowboy. Uh -huh. uh, uh, interesting kind of marketing, you know. Manischewitz presents the Jewish cowboy. That's great. It's a very, uh, very progressive organization, Manischewitz. <laughs> Make a good wine, yes, too. Yes. <laughs> yes, they do. This is also 33 and a third. Uh, They've been around for a while, Manischewitz. Yeah. yeah it's probably more good. Jewish jokes with the word Manischewitz in it than any other company. Yes. Yes. Howdy. My name is Harold Stern, the Jewish cowboy from Centerville, Texas. My drawl is second generation Texas, my horse is third generation Texas, and frankly, there's nothing so unusual about being a Jewish cowboy. You know, a lot of our ancestors lived off and rode over the land two, three thousand years ago, and I've often been asked how people in ranch country observe the holidays, uh, like Passover. Well, I can tell you straight away, it's much the same as you do. We have a wonderful Seda at home. And while we don't ride into the desert to bake our own unleavened bread, we sure get all the fixings from Manischewitz. Matzah, chicken soup, gut filled to fish, sponge cake, macaroons, everything from soup to nosh. <laughs> Down in Texas, we find it's a food for all seasons, for all people. And man, oh man, that's no bubble mice. Now, from another Jewish cowboy with a guitar, Here's a kind of Western style music I don't think you get to hear very often. Sung by my friend Avram, an honest to goodness sober who's getting to be real popular here in the States. <laughs> That's great. A land of milk and honey, right? Yes. Eretz Zavat Vechalav. Chalav Adabash. Guff filter fish. That's great. Guff filter fish. Now, I, I think you have uh, something also from um, Eleni Saraf, or is it uh, next year, actually? Oh, yes. The, uh, uh, by Hedva, Hedva and David. David. Yes. Amrani. Yes. David yeah. Amrani, is it? 
Yeah, uh, it was um, it was Hedva Amrani and David Tal. T-A-L. There it is. Okay. That's David the that's Tal the uh, that's the duo. Amrani. All right. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, and this is uh, Shana. The words in Hebrew are Shana Haba. Next year, we'll sit on the porch. We'll watch the f the uh, listen to the birds chirping away. <laughs> and uh, everything will be yes, good. Yes, this is uh, this is what it looks like. Oh yeah. Yeah, let me have the uh, the cover. This what it looks like while you're yeah. putting that on there. Okay. Yes. I just love these old covers, you know. Black and white, but still. Yeah. <laughs> It's, everything's in there. And you can tell it's after 67 because la, the, la, la, at the Kota. Okay, that's all we have time for on that one. Okay. Now, um, in the remaining few, um, little bit of time that we have, I'd like to play the uh, Hatikva, the National Anthem of Israel, sung by Richard Tucker. And Richard Tucker was a uh, great chazan and also an uh, opera singer. He was the number one tenor in the Met in his day. Um, he and Jan Pierce, his brother-in-law. So uh, we're going to hear um, the... Uh, Richard Tucker's version of Hatikva in the last remaining seconds of this show. Thanks for tuning in, and thanks so much for being here, sharing your music. Yes. Charles you. Berger, music okay. buff, friend, and congregant of Adat Israel in Newtown, Connecticut. Thanks so much. Thank you. You're welcome.